Good afternoon. I'm Lucas Panzeca. Breaking news, the Tennessee Lady Vols have fired head basketball coach Kelly Harper after five seasons at the helm. Harper, a former Tennessee player under Pat Summit, never finished better than third in the SEC during her time as the head coach in Knoxville. The Lady Vols never made it past the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament and were eliminated in the second round this season against NC State. Speaking of college basketball, the men's Final Four is set in stone. Tennessee eliminated by Purdue in the Elite Eight on Sunday. 72-66 was the final. Purdue moves on to face NC State, the 11 seed, who knocked off Duke yesterday in the Elite Eight. It'll be Bama and UConn playing the other fi- Final Four matchup in Phoenix. In the women's game, the Elite Eight begins tonight as Angel Reese and LSU face Caitlin Clark and Iowa. 6 p.m. is the tip-off. UConn and USC will face off tonight at 8. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Blaine and Mickey on a Monday. Breaking news, man. Uh, Just a few minutes ago, the Lady Vols announcing, well, the University of Tennessee via the Lady Vols Twitter account, announcing Kelly Harper out at the University of Tennessee. Lots of people looking at the timing of that April Fool's Day and saying, really, today? (laughs) I mean, it it kind of threw some people off because everybody still does all this ridiculous April Fool's Day stuff on their social media, but uh, you don't mess with somebody's, you know, livelihood like that. So well, this is real, and it just happened to happen on a bad day, but uh, we start with that news today. Gentleman Kelly Harper out at Tennessee, so Danny White will have a coaching search now for ladies basketball. Yeah, uh, two and what did we find out? Two and 16 against AP top 25 teams at the time that they played over the last two seasons. One and seven in this past season. And I know they've made the NCAA tournament every year. Um, I think been to a couple Sweet 16s under Kelly Harper, but just wasn't getting it done, especially at a time where women's college basketball is about as popular, almost as popular as it's ever been, um, where these stars are just shining left and right. And uh, unfortunately, Tennessee has not been a part of that conversation uh, for, for a long time. So... Uh, Danny White making an aggressive move to uh, try and put Tennessee back in the spotlight. This yeah, is, I mean, I don't think it's a, any surprise, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, now what direction? Do they stay in the family? Do they go outside the family? They go get someone who's a winner, pay them the big bucks uh, so they get the uh, program back to, you know, respectability and always contending for national titles or at least Final Four. So that'll be interesting to see what direction he goes. Uh with making this move, to me, you got to go with a no-brainer, You get, regardless if they're in the family or not. Yeah, so where does that lead you? I don't know. Ooh. You got to go with the best coach that will come. <laughs> and and I know a lot of all fans out there, I've seen it left and right, just go get Sto- go go write Don Staley a blank check and let her fill in the number. Don Staley's not leaving South Carolina. She's, she's built an elite program over there, and she is set for the rest of her life. I mean... About to make what four? Or this is what four straight Final Fours? Is that what it, what it was? Three straight Final Fours? About to win? Could have a chance to win another national championship this year? I think Don Staley's off the table. Is it, well, I mean, is this how UT got uh, uh, fans think that they really yeah. did that? Yeah, they, Don Staley. Oh yeah, there are several fans out there. Go go write Don Staley a blank check. She's not coming to Tennessee. No. She's, she's got <laughs> she's got the best. See, people must also look at the fit. Mm-hmm. The culture fit. Not just about winning. It's also about the culture fit. All right, I'm going to give you an example. Kanze Martin. Why did he get fired? Oh, because he wasn't a good fit there. They went to the Sweet 16. They fired him. So it's it's more than, than about winning. You also tried to have the check mark first of fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, let, let's don't get that confused. Uh, yeah, that's like, oh, let's go give Bill Belichick all the money. Well, we saw what I got him. Right? <sighs> he, he's an unemployed, right? So, yeah, I, I don't know the coaching industry and, and women's uh, basketball, but, uh, yeah, you want to get the fit. Sometimes uh, 
you know, maybe in another conference they're having real good success, but they don't have the resources like Tennessee does. Let's just say an ACC coach. Uh, we, I could say that is a loss in there who's hey, also UT. Yep. So, you know, but not saying that's who they're going to go after, but someone who is having to go, I don't even know how well they did. Be, to be honest, they, did they even make the tournament? They did. Okay. The last two years they, they have. Yeah, Duke. Yep. So, you know, sometimes you can check almost all the boxes if you have someone like that ilk that you know who understands the culture and how everything, you know, things operate. Or do you want to go separate since, you know, you, anyway, it's kind of new. Maybe he goes and go gets his own guy, just like he did with the football. Yeah, I, I think you you gotta you cannot lead this search based on the Lady Vol family because you're gonna miss yes. out on so many good candidates if you're just looking for another Lady Vol. No doubt to 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 take over the job like you have the last couple of years. So, mm. if, but if you don't win that first year, boy, they're gonna be first. That's the first thing gonna come out of people's mouths. He's not part of the family, yeah. or he or she or whoever it may be. That's the first thing's gonna happen. Especially that's why I said you kind of checks all the boxes uh, with loss. I mean. <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting. I don't even know if she'd be interested or how much she makes or or not. But uh, that's probably uh, my first go to. But I'm sure I don't have the the list in my pocket as Mickey always brings up for ads. To you got to have, gotta have your list. list. Yep. If so you make a move that. like that and you fire Kelly Harper, yeah. who yeah. at least always makes the tournament, she made uh, two rounds, two second rounds, and two Sweet Sixteens. And one year there was COVID, so they didn't have the chance to go. Mm. Yeah, boy. So it, here's Carol Lawson's record. She started the 2021 in Duke, and they opted out for COVID, so they only played four games, and she was three and one, and that was the end of their season. Oh, so the next year they were 17 and 13, and seven and 11 in the ACC, and then last year 22, 23, they were 26 and seven. They were 14, four. They were second in the ACC. They made the second round. This year they were 22 and 12. They were 11 and seven, but they made the Sweet 16. So they gone from opted out to not making the tournament to the second round of the Sweet 16. So keep ticking up. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that's the only person on my list, but I'm, I'm not in the AD business. <laughs> well, somebody who is in that world texted me and said, he's got to call Kara Lawson first, right? And, I, and this person listens. I want to out you. you. You can out hey, yourself if you want to. But right. he said, this is a guy who knows basketball. Hey, man. You don't fire Kelly Harper unless you have a really short list of who you want next because you don't want to get your pants. No, no that yeah. means that you called their agent and he yes. said, would they have any interest? Yes. And they say yes. So that's probably what he did for two or three candidates. Probably, Yeah, no doubt. So he said, Lawson surely seems like she has to be the first call. Let her turn you down if she does or take the job and then just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Either way, let her turn you down and then you find the next person on your list. I'm telling you, man, if I'm an AD and I'm going to fire somebody, I mean, here's one thing people have to remember. Like, everybody gets nervous about draft picks or coaching hires and fires. What if it doesn't work out? You can't think that way. Mm -mm. You, you can't think that way. You scout a potential coach. You scout a potential player. You have systems in place and checklists. Does this person check this box? Is, do they play in our system? Do they fit our system? Do they... Whatever it is that your system is. The that character, they fit. you know, yeah, all it. kind of things, yeah. And if they mm -hmm. fit that, then you hire them or you draft them. Right, you got to believe it's going to work out. Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, if not, I mean, can't go about it kind of like being a scared player. Oh, if he throws an interception, oh, man, he's not going to play well the rest of the game. Huh? <laughs> like, if the athletes had that kind of mentality, oh, if he gets me for a touchdown, he will have deer in the headlights and will never play well again. Man, you got to have be mentally strong. And I know the fan bases aren't. But the people who are making those kind of decisions, absolutely. Just like, I mean, nobody thought Hyper was going to be a good coach, did they? He was like, what, third, fourth, fifth on the list? Yeah. Oh, but it worked out, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, you got to believe in the process. And he knew somewhat of them. He didn't think he was going to have to go back to them because he hired them before. But, yeah, it worked out. So you just got to believe in the people in charge, which I think Tennessee sports is doing a fantabulous job in all the different sports. So just got to believe Danny White's going to get it done and, and trust in him in the, in the process. And, and whoever it may be, uh, they come in and knowing the expectations are going to be high. So, yeah. And everything's always about recruiting in college. So, got to be a great recruiter. You sure do. And you even got to be able to re-recruit your own people every year now, yeah. more so than you ever did. Yeah. Like you said, you probably got to play everybody a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, man, my man Barnes did do that. I loved it. I, did. I hated that we lost. But, <laughs> I, that, but as I said before, a do was a fake a do. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And by the way, I've been pounding on the table all year. What was that? Something's in here cricketing. 
Did you hear that? I heard it a second ago. But uh, we, yeah, we got I, loose Jiminy Crickets in here. Yeah, somebody yeah. put something in here, mess, messing something up. But uh, yeah, that the supporting cast was eventually going to take Tennessee down, and it's exactly what happened. Nobody had ten points besides Connect. Nope. Yeah. See, and as I said, you got to find a way. Look at Purdue. Look at their team. Well, I know they got a great player. All right. Look at how their players got involved. And look, they only had one other person have. 14. Yep. All we needed was one more player that was double digit. Ziggler did not play well. Now, I don't even think he played well defensively either. I think he thought took it on as a one-on-one matchup with him and the other guard. I, di- I didn't like the way he played it all. He took unadvised shots there from three-pointer. Uh, then he wasn't even hitting him when he was open. Uh, I, di- I didn't like the way he played. Adu was horrible. The guys who came in, Waka, and they did a fabulous job. I mean, against a guy like that as an unmovable force, as well as, a, what's his, Estrella? Uh, J.P. Estrella, the yeah, freshman. Yeah, he did a great yep. job. So they got some talent there coming in and up, or, you know, with the big men. Uh, but, yeah, the, the the role players did not, yeah, we, we couldn't get anything. James, the first half, good. Eight points, disappeared. Second half, if, as far as points. And he turned down a couple shots he could have taken. Uh, and he was filling the flow. What's that? I, I don't know if he took a shot in the yeah. second half. Right. I said he turned him down, and he could have yeah. taken him. But, uh, yeah, that that was just – it just went best of It is what it is. He was sick, so he just came in. Willie was a defensive guy. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was I was thoroughly disappointed because I knew Connect couldn't do it as hot as he was there for right. a period of time. I just knew there was going to be – he couldn't – he couldn't do it. And then they were just running all plays for him. There was no counters to everything else. Kind of pretty much all they did, like, during the season. But the other players played better. Uh, at least uh, Ziggler would have. And that's all they needed was him to – just to hit a couple more shots. Uh, so, I, yeah, I was disappointed. Everybody's going to talk about the whistle and everything else. Uh, at the end of the day – yeah, could you have gotten a couple calls here or there, him in the lane. They didn't call it all year. They never call it. So, I mean, let's, let's don't be sore losers that we they lost. Guess what? You can even I can even complain about Barnes and some of his strategy, and it was strategies because the players didn't play well, not because he should have had it in there in place. How about do a change-up defense, right, to you know, put a zone? They weren't hitting threes, Purdue, initially for a long period of time, even into the second half. All right, let's play some zone, and that way we can pack it in, make them shoot threes, and then all of a sudden let's switch it back. It's just so predictable on offense, but that's only to compensate for the poor play. Mm-hmm. So I mean I really had no issues with what he his strategy, but man, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they, I just felt like they just didn't step up when they needed to. To me, everything is connect. Everything is connected. And that that's not going to do it when you play the really good teams. That's exactly what happened. And gotta give tip to cap to connect, man. He was man. Phew. At the end there, I just wish he had a little more leg and lift. The, the shots was on target. They just wasn't falling. Yeah. But man, it w- it would have been a one man show, but it was yep, oh Purdue, and then oh yeah, I know we doing ding dong, but boy, stop saying nobody wants to see Purdue in the finals. Stop that. <laughs> stop. Don't be sore losers. Got to tip the cap, be pissed off and mad. But hey, that's, that's made it to the lead eight. That's that was the barometer. I thought that the team at least made it to the lead eight. Mm-hmm. They they had a successful season. They did. They did. Just came up short. Dang it. They've advanced one round every year for the last four years. So yeah. it was a first round exit, yeah. then a second round exit, a sweet sixteen exit, and elite eight elite eight exit. So in two years they'll be in that national championship. Well, there's only one more weekend of basketball and they made it to the very end. They made it yeah. to every weekend of basketball they could have played except for the next one. So you're right. But they got hey man, thirty seven of sixty six points were one guy. Yeah. You got to find your committee to get you some points next year. It was great to have the one guy who could score, but like Blaine said, they'd go long stretches where it's like isolate him on one side and everybody just watch him, just watch him do his work, just right. clean out, yeah. just clean out. That's your side. We'll all go over here. Yeah, yeah. Whoever big is in, we'll stick him down in the paint. See what happens. But what a great run though by Tennessee, oh, though, man. man. A great running back. They have they, you know, they should be proud, man. Dang, I know they want to win. <laughs> Can't win them all. There was a couple times I thought they're about to freaking win this game and go to the Final Four. When so, they were up by eleven, that that's when they they let them creep back in there. Yeah. They, that that should not have happened. That's when you need a big who could just be efficient enough to be a factor. There was none. There was no on the offensive end. Right. Yeah. 
when they were up by 11, and then in the second half when they, when they tied the game, I think it was at 58 when they got the game tied after they had crawled back. I thought they were going to – and then they went cold again. Both yep. times, as soon as they got to those two points, they went cold. I think they had two – Three and a half minute scoring droughts in that game. And what did they run? They ran three plays in a row for Connect who missed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they he just has to be cold. able to learn at the next level, okay, to set up other guys for clean, open shots. Cause that's the next thing. Cause once he decides he's shooting or going to the rack, there is no option off of his game. Right. Yeah. That, but. They, they, yeah, they they were all dependent on him anyway. You could tell they were running the plays. Well, let's do this. Let's continue this discussion. Vols and Lady Vols. Alex is on the line, wants to talk about the Lady Vols. I'm just curious because there are a lot of Lady Vols fans out there. Who do you want as the next coach? Do you finally want to go outside the family? We got time to take calls in this hour. Ben McKee's going to join us at 220. We'll get a hot board from Vols, Go Vols 247. Lots to get to. But if you want to sound on off, sound off on any of this, you can do it. 615-737-1045. That'll get you on the Blaine and Mickey show powered by all four seasons garage doors. So, the sports calendar is loaded right now, right? And FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on any of this crazy sports action that's going on right now. That's because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet. You know, this big tournament that's going on right now that's held all of our interests so well. Maybe Major League Baseball, which is just getting rolling. Maybe the National Basketball Association, which, let's be honest, we're getting closer and closer to crunch time. Or the NHL. Local teams have been on a pretty good run lately. Maybe you want to uh, keep up with the Preds there. Whatever you want to do, just visit FanDuel.com slash Mickey and make your first bet a big win. That's FanDuel dot com slash Mickey FanDuel America's number one sports book. You do have to be 21 or older though. Present in Tennessee. First online real money wager only. Ten dollar first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook dot FanDuel dot com. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line at one 789 
Blaine and Mickey. Who's bad? There's a cricket loose in the studio or something sounds like one. Can you guys hear that over the air? Can people hear that or is it only us? I haven't heard it. Okay. Well, we can hear it. So if you hear a cricket. Well, he just thinks we're making it up. We've, uh, we've hired Jiminy Cricket from Disney It might be too Disney quiet fame. to uh, go into the microphone if it is in there. Well, I don't know. Let's talk to Ken. Maybe Ken can explain how crickets get in studios. And Ken has thoughts on Kelly Harper as well. 615-737-1045. Again, we'll get you on Blaine and Mickey powered by all four seasons garage doors. Hey, Ken. Hi, guys. Hey, what's going on, man? We, y'all, y'all brought up this about Kelly Harper getting fired. I think the girl's done a great job. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I know y'all are questioning it, too. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, we, she has to go up against LSU. She has to go up against South Carolina. She goes up against the toughest schools, and they're in her conference. And they said she's gotten no better than third. Well, look, you've got those two ahead of you, and they're not going to lay down for you. You just keep battling and trying to – well, and I wonder, I wonder. The girl who plays for South Carolina that is so good, big girl. Uh, what is kind of NIL? Yeah, she's six seven or something like that. Oh gosh, okay, it starts I don't with know a C. Who? Mm-hmm. South talking Carolina. About? Mm-hmm. Edie, you talking about Edie? This girl can move. She can fly down the co- down the floor. Wonder what her nil money is. Mm. I don't know. So you're saying, hey man, just start throwing around some crazy amounts of nil money and see if you can turn this thing around. Yeah, I hate this. That's why I hate NIL and the portal. <laughs> I get I it. it. I hate it. And coaches, uh, Cliff Ellis had an article in the paper yesterday. Uh, and then, of course, Saban has already spoke out against it. And it, it's when a kid tells you, how much are you going to give me? Yeah. You know, it just gets hard. And uh, it- and the crazy Ken, thank you for the phone call. And the crazy thing is, like the first thing Ken said, it's crazy and I hate it. But the first thing Ken said was, I wonder what it would cost to get that that mm-hmm. talented young lady from South Carolina. I mean, I will say this. If you've been coaching forever, this is so new to you. But let's say you're a young coach. This is going to be the only system that you know. So younger coaches in the system, Blaine, it's a big of a pain in the butt as this might be. This will be the system that they know. Mm-hmm. Where you come in and and you know everybody's going to ask how much are you going to pay me like you, you you know that now that's just your expectation, so uh, there'll be a whole different generation of coaches who this is the only system that they will be in that you know they're adapting to it now but it's not like they're seventy and having to adapt to it they're thirty or twenty eight or whatever they are so this is the system that they know. But uh, the question for the Lady Vols, as we said, is do you go outside the family? Do you call Carol Lawson first? I told you I had an athletic administrator long time send me a message and say, you don't make this move unless you have your next person, you think. Uh, and that f- person for him, he said, would be Carol Lawson is the person that he would call. Again, mm-hmm. 615-737-1045. If you're going back, that's the first person. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. That's the first person we all thought of. Because we didn't discuss this. You came in and said, well, I, yeah, I guess you don't you call Carol Lawson first. So, or do, or do you go outside the family yeah, after well, I mean, she turns it down? Yeah. All this time. Mm-hmm. What I was interested in what the caller just said is, uh, you know, against the big three in, in the conference, you know, she's probably maybe that's why the move was made is because they feel like they never had a shot of beating the big three yep. in the SEC and that, uh, you know, competitive but not competitive enough in the recruiting side of it. So, you know, she, you know, or the portal. So, yeah, maybe you, you say we're going to go swing for the fences. We're going to get somebody who has that kind of swag to take these guys, uh, these other big three down. So, and I wonder who that is, man. Wow. That's a tough, tough one there. Because you sure in the heck is not going with the up-and-comer. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> make things, you better not make that move after you let Har- Harper go there, man. So, oof. This is a tough one here, man. And this ranks up there as one of those. We have this discussion sometimes about coaches. Is the who are you going to get better? Because Kelly was well liked. Mm-hmm. She had history in the program. She won, I think, three national championships as a player. She, you know, worked under the master Pat. Every, you know, she was well liked, well respected, a bedrock player in your program. She made the tournament every year. They made two Sweet Sixteens. So you may get somebody, and they may say, "I'm about to just tear this thing down to the studs and build it back up." Could you imagine not making a tournament a couple of years, like you said? I'm about to tear it down, build it back up in, in my image. Could you imagine tearing this sucker down and it winning, you know, 10 games next year? No. Then 14 the next? Mm-mm. I, mean, I don't want to hear anything about no tearing down. Yep. 
No, nope. if everybody leaves, then it's tore down on its own. Then you build it right there. But build off of uh, what's here or who's here when you get here. Yeah, so I'm not, yeah, just work with, you know, because you can't go get all the players and just change everything in one year. The expectation here. A lot of people are just going to stay with the program, uh, you know, players just because it's Tennessee. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, as That's we, what Hypo did. He yeah. didn't tear anything out. He, he worked with the, the Pruitt players. And it actually made a huge move in switching over to Hooker, which wasn't his recruit. And the Lady Vols, I, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Jules Spear, who was their second leading scorer, their best three-point shooter, I, I think she announced that she's returning uh, again mm-hmm, next year. I saw that. So mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if that's going to change now that – I don't know if she knew about the Kelly right. Harper right, right, news right. before or after that announcement, but uh, whoever, whoever comes in, they're going to have some players to work with. Um, but they will have to start building their own roster, unfortunately, because of the the lack of recruits that Kelly Harper has brought in over the last couple of years. Well, that's another thing you've talked about a whole lot is great in the portal, but has not been great at bringing in any recruits. Any yeah. recruits. I mean, Rakia Jackson, who yeah. was who's going to be a first round uh, WNBA draft pick um, this upcoming draft, got her out of the portal, got a couple others, just no high school, no, no young core to to help build around. So it's that's been her greatest downfall. Uh, also talking about uh, the men losing to Purdue in a closely contested game. Uh, Vols finished in the Elite Eight this season. Trey in Nashville wants to go from the Lady Vols to the to the Vols, I believe it is. Trey, what's going on? Thanks for calling. Hey, how y'all doing today? Good. Good. Hey, 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 I watched the game last night, man, and I'm going to just say like this. You know, oh, sore loser this, sore loser that. Dude was pushing up under the basket all night long mm-hmm. on that block. All night. I seen at least four or five fouls myself from my couch last night, and they mm-hmm. didn't call nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's tough to play against five, but it's really tough to play against an extra three, man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, we had an opportunity. You know, we was up, what, 12, 15? They came back. Yeah, I understand that. Zeke didn't play well. I understand that. Edie could have dropped 50, and we still could have won that game. Yeah, but, yep. okay, okay, uh, 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 so he didn't he, he didn't foul nobody all night, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, that's yeah, not that fair, was, man. Yeah. That's terrible. Hey, mm-hmm. but I love you guys, and y'all take care, okay? That's all I had to say. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Appreciate but it, Trey. I think that was the same way. I mean, we, the reason why I say this for Tennessee is that you know, how are you supposed to call the game? And let's go back and look at when they played them the first time. The call, the game was, they was 50 billion fouls, so they can't call every play. I mean, they can't <laughs> call fouls all over the place. Um, the, to me, that's what Adu wouldn't do, and that's why he didn't play, is he didn't push him out of his comfort zone. Right. He was just getting easy turnaround, left hook, right hook, layups, dunks. It was like, well, dang, man, all you can do, he's going to get his points. Uh, so... Uh, maybe not 40, but uh, if you would have held him to, like, 30, I think that would have been better. But, hey, and then him not getting any fouls, that shows you to me that Tennessee didn't go to the basket and they had no inside presence from a big man. That's what that tells me. We can't just look at the stats. Like, oh, yeah, he didn't have any fouls. Well, just go back and look at the game. I watched the game again today, and I'm like, well, there was never maybe, – maybe ticky-tack here or there. Maybe it could have couple been a couple more, uh, even on his side of on being an offensive player. Uh, but – at the end of the day, I thought they called it fair on both sides. That's why I don't have a big big issue. And they still should have won the game if they would have been like they have been most of the season, hitting some more shots. Yeah. Like, it, it was there. They they had it. Uh, it we can blame the rest because you lost and, they, you know, they caught all the fouls and I get it. But, yeah, you, as an athlete, being a former athlete, you never want to have excuses. And I thought they called it fair on both ends. Both ends. So it was, you know, they just had a better player in the post. That's it? Yeah. Now, was he in the lane three seconds? Oh, my God. He sat in there. One time I counted <laughs> eight, nine seconds. But they hadn't called. How, think about this. You We watched multiple games all season. Not Purdue, Tennessee. How many times do they call three seconds? I haven't seen one time. I, I don't remember it being called. Yeah, I don't either. See? So we're going to sit here and complain about something that they don't normally call anyway. It's because they had a great player and we couldn't stop them. Yep. Here's the thing, too. 
you knew what was coming. You knew they don't call three seconds on him. You, you knew that. Right. That's you what knew I'm that he never gets called for fouls. Yeah. And you <laughs> it know. It didn't change for any time of the first time. That teams go after him. Now, you know me, and I like to have a stat to back up what we're talking about. Let me hit you with this one. About, about the big man. This is going to blow y'all's minds. This is how I say that you knew what you were getting into. I should just tease this for later. This is such an unbelievable stat about oh, Zach no, Eady. I can't wait. What? We got plenty of time, Mickey. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm, I'm just going slow here because I'm milking this for all it's worth. <laughs> oh, you, I was driving back from, you from. Pat yourself on the back on this one. This is a good one. <laughs> hey, man. You know I like a good stat. It's part of the story, right? We yeah, agree. Always. It's not everything, oh, but it's part oh, of the story. Oh, yeah. It's definitely part of the story. But this is the thing where I'm like, well, you knew what was coming. So I'm driving back from Arkansas, and I'm listening on the radio to the Westwood One broadcast, uh-huh. which is brought to you by Farm Bureau Health Plans, and I'll have to find all the people who brought it to you. Bananas will remember that. And the announcer said something about Edie going to the line. He goes, well, he shot more foul shots this year and made more foul shots than anybody in the nation. Uh-huh. Do, do you... Do you gentlemen know how many more foul shots that he shot than anybody else in the nation? Well, I know he was like the sixth player ever to have over 400 plus free throws. Okay, so stop right there. So this wasn't a one one game occasion. This is throughout the his entire career, let alone this season. Yes, so he shot 402 free throws this year. So he shot 402. How many people do you think not over How many people do you think shot over 300? Over 300. He shot 402. How many players do you think, well, if this guy shot 402, how many people do you think shot over 300? In the country. In the country. And that's there's like how many? 300 Division One basketball. Uh, I don't know. Over 300? What do you say? Oh, he's on. Uh, I'm going to say uh, five. Two. Mm. So, Deron Holmes of Dayton Shot 289 free throws. He was fourth in the country. 289. 289 was fourth. Uh, Jadon uh, Ledee of San Diego State shot 308, or Jaden uh, shot 308. P.J. Haggerty of Tulsa shot 309. That was the second highest total. Edie shot 402. He shot, what's that, 90. Seven more free throws. Were those other? I know you didn't look at. Were those other players big men? The no. second guy was a guard. Oh, the third guy was a forward, and the fourth guy was a forward. Yep. Yeah, and I can see that happening now, especially with big. I mean, the guys like seven four because us mostly perimeter players now, or the game become perimeter. Even if you a big now these days, you better be able to shoot. Sure, at, at least fifteen he's, foot. He's a true big. Big, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I, yeah, and I get it. But, man, how are you supposed to call I mean, you guess him. I mean, you could literally call three seconds every time he's down. You, I mean, you could call a foul. People playing him all the time. I mean, it's, it's it can go all kind of ways. So I just felt like Tennessee still could have beat them even with what he did. They just, they didn't, they, they didn't hit the critical shots and critical moments throughout the game that they normally make. I mean, Zakai goes one of eight from yeah, three. Yeah, he was bad. Jonas Adu doesn't hit a mid-range jump shot in the last he two games. He kept fumbling, bumbling with the ball. Couldn't, couldn't oh, do anything man, I wanted, down I wanted low. To, I wanted to kick my TV. Like, he played even, 10 minutes. Like, even against Creighton uh, on Friday night. Like, he started he, out fumbling and bumbling. He, he, yeah. he was the exact same way against yeah. Creighton on Friday night, and he kept taking those mid-range shots that they kept letting him, and he kept bricking them every time. And he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go down low, and he wouldn't establish anything. And then eventually Barnes was like, all right, you're out, and he put a waka in there, just like he did, uh, just like he did against Zach Eady and Purdue. And a waka, credit to him and JP Estrella, like you said earlier, Blaine. I mean, they battled. They they mm-hmm. they, they put fought. they put everything they could. That's what I say. Into Adu that is not game. tough. Like he is not going to fight you. He that's all he had to do. We, I'm not going to let you post me up on the thing. And here's another thing I thought they should have done. They should have fronted him sometimes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, make him throw over the top. That way, you could at least have backside help. And see if they can make a perfect throw sure. with Ziggler all up in your face, pressing you all up, and you got to make a good, great pass. So I, I thought they should have just kind of tweaked some things just along, just because the guys weren't playing very well. Right. Uh, but, you know, that's hindsight's 2020. I'm sure he's going back doing the same thing. 
you know, maybe could have threw in a zone here or there after a timeout just to throw him off guard there and you go back to man to man after the next possession. But I'm just trying to, you know, you're trying to steal possessions and, and thinking that, okay, we change up and then they caught him off guard and then they were razzled. Then we come back down, we go back to the man to man. I mean, those are the things I think once you don't, you're not, you know, have the roster or the bigs to compete with that guy. You got to start thinking outside the box. I, I appreciate him playing it with even the car guy. I had never seen him play. He, he hit that three. I was like, oh, dang, he's right there. You know, the future kind of look maybe, I mean, not great, but because you got connect, but pretty, they, they, go, they got some players. It's waiting in the wings. Uh, we got callers waiting in the wings. Let's squeeze in a couple of these rascals. Gerald in Nashville up first, 615-737-1045. Yeah, how you guys doing? Good. Hey, man, we're doing great, man. Okay, I'm just calling. I'm not from – I live in Nashville. I'm from Michigan. But Tennessee people got to stop crying about the game yesterday. That's part of the game. I'm an yeah. ex-athlete myself. D1 school – Brian, you know, I went to Central Michigan, Matt Compers. Oh, yeah. So, games, you, you deal what you got to deal with. Mm-hmm. You can't call, you can't cry about the fouls with the big boy. Deal with it and just just deal with it. <laughs> so don't cry about that. Killer Hopper, she getting fired today. It's a new game now with an AIL game going with with the girls with all sports. It's a whole different game. Can't yeah. see people are so used to uh, pet some of them going to the final four. It's a new game, like UConn. We're like a UConn girls won a championship game. Games have changed. Adapt to it. Change your way to be successful. That's all I have to say. Goodbye. I, I appreciate the phone call, Gerald. And, and I get it. I mean, you know, fans, you, you piss out. But I, I really believe they still could have won the game regardless of how they were calling fouls on Edie or not calling fouls on them. You know, so, I, yeah, I think it was more them than the referees. But it's it's hard to look at the stats and go, oh man, look how many foul shots they shot right. thirty three in Tennessee only shot eleven. I mean, Jack Eady had twenty two I mean, so himself without yeah. watching the game. That's why I said, you know, sometimes the stats tell you some parts of the story. And sometimes, nah, they 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 should have made some more shots. You know, three for fifteen. What were they from the three point eleven from twenty six? Yeah, no post play at all. All you needed was a couple baskets, a couple baskets to be a threat. All right. Uh, we got a lot of callers who want to jump into the mix here. Jay, Emily, Jason, hold. We will come to you, uh, and we'll take your phone call. 615-737-1045. We'll continue to talk Vols uh, and more next on Blaine and Mickey. Dingers and blasts, moonshots, whatever you want to call them. Everybody loves home runs. I know I loved uh, when my team used to hit them. And with FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays, you can love them even more, right? That's right. Dinger Tuesdays, back for another season on America's number one sports book. Just bet on any player to homer. And FanDuel's going to give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run that gets hit during that game. Like I said, my Cardinals are struggling with power right now, but you know who's not? Teoscar Hernandez. It seems like he hit one out about every time he batted, and he's going to keep it rolling, it feels like. Maybe you like Matt Olson. Whatever you need, if you needed any other reason to long ball, just to love the long ball, just visit FanDuel.com slash Mickey and get in on all the Tuesday dinger 
Dinger Tuesday action. That's FanDuel.com slash Mickey. We'll get you there. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. You got to be 21 or older, though. Present Tennessee. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets. Expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms of sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line at 1 800 889 9789. All these folks who drive around Nashville, you see the billboards from PAI. And occasionally some people will come up to me and they'll ask me about PAI, and they always ask me about the billboards. Are those things real? Or is that like Photoshop? No, it's real. PAI, it's real. It's all true. Everything. If you're losing your hair, if you've lost it all, you can go there and they will help you get it back. And here's the thing. It's not some crazy, weird bunch of voodoo or anything like that. It's just science. It's technology to get your own hair growing on your own head. They can tell you all about it. You can, matter of fact, you can just go right now, go to wegrowhair.com. You could see real people, real stories. They'll tell you their stories. You can see all the before and after pictures. And maybe you think, yep, that's me. That's where I am now. That's where I want to be next. Call them. Make that first appointment, right? It's like getting a game plan with your coaches, PAI. They're your hair coaches, wegrowhair.com. So call, get the free consultation. You get all your information. Then you're ready to make a decision to get your hair back, get the old you back. Permanent natural results from the company you can trust, PAI Medical Group, wegrowhair.com. Call them now. Tell them I sent you 615-376-6010.
Ring a ding, ding dong. We'll get to ding dong of the week coming up. Uh, but first, let's take these vol calls. You want to throw some oh, ding kids. dongery in there? You can do that as well. Drop a ding dong in the F and M bank chat. Of course, Mark Spain always making it happen. Go to markspain.com to get a guaranteed offer on your home today and start packing. And remember this: all you ding dong candidates, we got stuff to give away. Bananas have been working what? behind the scenes. Yep. You give us your Ding Dong Candidate of the Week for a chance to win tickets to see Train and Oreo Speedwagon on August 18th at First Bank Amphitheater, 615-737-1045. So the best Ding Dong gets to go see Oreo Speedwagon and Train. That's a night of rock and roll right there. It's something your boy right here doesn't need to miss. Take these Vol calls, and you can stick a Ding Dong in your Vols call as well if you want to. Jay and Lebanon up first. Hey, Jay. Mickey, what do y'all guys think about Coach Bond development and recruitment of low post players through his history? Oh, I don't know what it, what has his history been on low post players. No, I'm just trying to say I I as I observe it, have he ever had any great low post players? Do you call do you count Grant Williams as a low post player? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah well, he's a mid-range mm-hmm. player yeah. for sure. Yeah. At least in college. And my point was. I'm trying to make is that I I think that's the thing that they're missing from my point of view mm-hmm. is that he just haven't recruited or developed enough low post players to go with the other uh, team members to be successful. And I think that's what failed us yesterday. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. But you were thinking that Adu, who was second team All SEC, would have been at least somewhat of a of a factor at some point. Remember, I was saying you got to run plays for him to keep him involved and engaged. And he those plays that he fumbled and bumbled and got shots were not plays called for him. Uh, he got it, you know, through, you know, Jay. He was open, you know, and then he kind of act like he wasn't supposed to get the ball. Well, and Purdue obviously content to throw it to a big man and to let him do his thing. And he scored 40 points yesterday. I heard the cricket again. Yeah, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Bananas, what do you think about that with that question? And I think there's some validation to that. I mean, traditionally, I, I can't think of anybody. He is not the, – the post position has been his weakest recruited and developed position in his tenure at Tennessee. He had Kyle Alexander, who I guess was – your your last like true center uh, that was on the Grant William days. Um, you had Euro, you had Euros who never really panned out. You know, great passion guy, but never huge really, body, huge huge body, just never worked though. out yeah. um, on the floor. Uh, then Jonas Adu is probably your your most recent is your best success in the post for for Rick Barnes, and even then, I mean. This year he had a breakout year, but yeah, kind of disappeared in the in the tournament when you needed him. And then I mean, he, what about got, the kid that went to Michigan to transfer to Michigan? Oh, uh, Olivier uh, Com- uh, Olivier Comois. Comois. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. He was good. Uh, I think he was more. He wasn't really of a, a well, I mean, true we, post player. Grant Williams in yeah. this, then he's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he, I mean, he was good. Inconsistency yeah. is, is where I would define the Rick Barnes post player development because they might have two or three game stretch where it's like, oh my gosh. And they have two or three game stretch, so they just disappear. Well, I'm going to say this. Not to say that he doesn't, because these guys transferred. I just mentioned a couple. The kid that went to Louisville, I think Hatfield, he's in the portal again because they fired their coach. Yeah. Right? I didn't even know he was on the team. And then everybody's talking about the, the big guy. they talking about he's going to get drafted football, the Burns guy, the DJ Burns DJ from Burns, NC State. State. He started he at Tennessee. He started at Tennessee. Yeah. I said, what? <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember this yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Somebody had a picture of it earlier recruiting today. recruiting yeah. players. Yeah. It, it, they just uh, left. I mean, so there's been some quality players there. It just – they just, it's just inconsistency. That's that's the that's the word that I would well, describe. Well, I'm gonna say this though: when you're a big man and you're not getting touches, it's hard to be consistent. And that might you be just You have to feel system. like you're involved in the the plan. And, like their stretches, they do. I mean, or you know, even during the season, not in the tournament, but he he wouldn't even get the ball at all. So I think some big men look at it that way and go, well, man, I'm I'm never really going to be part of this offensive side. I'm just a a big out here to guard and get rebounds, block shots, and you know putbacks. That's it. Uh, that means so. Uh, it could be something to that. He's recruited them. They just not haven't stayed. Let's get uh, one more call right quick before we got to take this break. Jason in the borough. Hey, Jason. Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. 
Uh, I just want to say this has been my favorite team uh, to oh, follow yeah. to date. It's, it's mm-hmm. a fantastic group of young men, great attitudes. If we want to reflect on the Purdue game yesterday, if you want to get a guy out of the game, there's two ways to do it. Attack. You want us to get him in foul trouble, right? Yep, attack him. So mm-hmm. they're, clear, they're clearly letting him use his weight, his size on the offensive end. But on our offensive end, we did not challenge him enough to create foul opportunities for him. And that's a, I think that's a coaching problem that we had yesterday. Great uh, point. I put that on Barnes, but um, that's one way to get him out. The other way is to call Tanya Hardy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, think she's, I think she's out of that business now. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's what we'll do. Yeah. Start hour number two. We can take the rest of these Vols calls. Also, uh, Ding Dong of the Week calls. Plenty of candidates there. Steve mentioned won the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament playing with one three-point line closer to. Oh, that was the Ding Dong I've other. ever seen. I, it, I think Bananas must have did the three-point line. 100%. That, he that was, was embarrassing for he, women's, but that was. That he was, was out bad. there with some tape getting it wrong. Uh, so there's a candidate for you right there. Uh, Alex and Franklin has one on the phone, 615-737-1045 for your chance to win Oreo Speedwagon and train tickets. Also, we got this. We got to give away which one? Swifty? We doing this? Yeah, we got to do the keyword. Okay, calling all Swifties. Start picking out your heirs' outfits and making those friendship bracelets because we just might fulfill your wildest dreams with our Tay Tay flyaway. You and your bestie could win one of three trips to see Taylor's Eras uh, tour this fall, including round trip air, two nights at a hotel, five hundred dollars spending cash, and two of the hottest tickets on the planet. Text the national keyword me right M-E, me me m e to 95819 now to enter for a chance to win. Text me, M-E, to 95819 now for a chance to win. Below MSRP? Below MSRP. Below MSRP. It's pretty simple. Two River Ford sells all new non-specialty Fords below MSRP.
Good afternoon. It is 2 o'clock right on the dot. I'm Joseph Bonanno. The Titans officially announced the trade for cornerback Legereus Sneed over the weekend. He will be introduced in a press conference tomorrow afternoon at 11, or tomorrow morning, excuse me, at 11.30 p.m. You can catch that right here on The Zone. Breaking news out of Knoxville. Lady Vols head coach Kelly Harper has been fired after five seasons with the team, Harper went 108-52 and at Tennessee, making the NCAA tournament every year, including two Sweet 16 trips, but was just 1-7 versus top 25 teams this season. The men's Final Four is set, and Tennessee was eliminated in the Elite Eight by Purdue on Sunday, 72-66. to Two Player of the Year candidates were going head-to-head as Don Connect scored 37 for Tennessee, and center Zach Eady scored a career-high 40 points with 16 rebounds. Tennessee season comes to an end with a record of 27 27- and nine, Purdue moves on to play NC State in the Final Four, who knocked off Duke on Sunday, 76-64. On Saturday, Alabama outlasted Clemson, and UConn routed Illinois. Bama and UConn will face off in Phoenix on Saturday. Tonight, the women's Elite Eight begins as Angel Reese and LSU face Caitlin Clark and Iowa, a 6 p.m. tip-off. UConn and USC will face off at 3 p.m. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Welcome into hour number two of the Money Monday show. Um, Tennessee going to be paying Kelly Harper some money because they are cutting ties with the head coach after five years. She made two second rounds. She made two sweet 16s one year. There was COVID. Nobody got to do nothing that year. Boy, I I hope we never have another year like that of our lives again. Um, She was 108 and 52 in five years. She was 53 and 24 in the SEC. Never finished better than third in the SEC. Uh, what did you come up with, Bananas? They Them against top 25 teams? Yeah, in the last two seasons versus top 25 teams, uh, at the time they had faced them, uh, she was 2 and 16, including in tournament play. They, that, that, yeah. 1 and 7 this last season. Their only win versus uh, number 22. Uh, Oklahoma earlier in the year. Oklahoma got bounced in the first weekend. And then last year, their only win versus a top 25 team was against LSU in the SEC tournament uh, before they went on to lose to South Carolina. Wow. Also, the fellas, uh, their season has finished in the Elite Eight after a 72-66 loss to Purdue. Dalton Connect had 37 in his final game mm. in a Tennessee uniform. Zach Eady had 40 uh, for Purdue, no other balls. Blaine said scored in double figures. Edie shot 22 free throws in the game as the Boilers attempted 33. The Vols shot 11. Uh, Tennessee's bigs. Toby Awaka fouled out in 14 minutes. Adu went scoreless on 0 of 4 shooting and played 10 minutes. J.P. Estrella outplayed them all 15 minutes. That's the future right there. Uh, Purdue attempted 81 to 41 free throws in the two games they played this season. So if you're Tennessee, you knew it was coming. It looked a lot like this the first game that you played them. Uh, Purdue out-rebounded Tennessee by 21 in this game. They got a lot of second chances and even some third chances. See, that there, they can't let that happen. Uh, including 13 offensive boards for the Boilers. So uh, Tennessee basketball update as we start the hour. Also, ding dong of the week. We got callers online. We got something to give away. Um, tickets to see Train and Oreo Speedwagon for the biggest ding dong. That is August 18th at First Bank Amphitheater. You got plenty of time to plan this. So jump in the ding dong madness, 615 737 1045. Again, Steve has uh, given one to the NCAA for the women's basketball tournament, playing with one three point line closer than the other. And people are piling on this in the chat saying yeah, was it was so obvious you could see it while yeah, watching yeah. the games. All right, let's go. Uh, who is up first? Eric in Nashville usually jumps in first for this. Hey, Eric. Hey, guys. I already told the, the guy called screen you can take me out of the running because I, I want somebody to win it that's really going to enjoy it more than why, my will. Fair enough. But mine goes, goes back to last week. Draymond Green for getting ejected in the Orlando game against Orlando Magic last Wednesday. Got two technical fouls in like four minutes. He got his first one, one where he said, kept mouthing off the referee. He didn't want to do it, but he finally did it. You saw Steph Curry's emotion. He was upset that he got ejected. Steve Kerr said he got what he deserved. Even Draymond agreed, admitted he was wrong. 
But it gets to a point, guys, I mean, after getting indefinitely suspended early in the season, and it's continuing this annex, and now it's getting to a point where you have to wonder, the annex are getting more serious than his talent, and they're going to, I think, have to seriously think about whether or not it's time to move off the guy in the offseason. And at this point in his career, what can you get for him if that does happen? Mm. So that's mine. Guys, y'all take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Boy, when you're winning, you could be a ding dong. When you're winning championships, but as your talent starts to go down, you're a big reason why the team wins championships. You can get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. But when the championships go away and the talent starts to dwindle, uh, we can find a younger, cheaper guy to pick up those minutes who's not a ding dong, Draymond. Yeah, he is definitely that man. He is man. He, and somebody, you know, somebody said, "Oh no, he's just like Dennis Rodman." I said, oh, no, 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 no." And I'm not talking about play. I'm just talking about man. <laughs> Yeah, Dennis Rodman, uh, he wasn't an irritant like this. This is on a whole nother level. Uh, yes, I, man, I, I'm I'm actually sick of him, to be honest. Well, it'll be interesting to see if the uh, Golden State Warriors are sick of him. And like Eric said, I mean, how many people are going to be in line to who pick up a guy with diminishing skills who gets a lot of technicals? Man, gosh. Uh, gosh. Alex and Franklin up next with a ding dong of the week. Again, courtesy of our friend Mark Spain. Go to markspain.com to get a guaranteed offer on your home today and start packing. Hey, Alex. Oh, Rashid Wallace. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, my ding dong of the week goes to Nick Wright. He did a segment on on at the Fox Sports 1's first six first. He did a segment about the AFC South and the Titans came up. And he said the Titans are going to be the number one pick next year. And the other two hosts, That's I don't know their names. I think it's Chris Broussard. They said um, – but they picked up all these players, and then he didn't. He doubled down on his take, saying they're poorly run. He's a ding dong because I'm so sick of these national analysts like crapping on the Titans and like not giving any evidence to back it up. Like the Titans, look, I'm not saying they're a Super Bowl team, but but they're not going to be the number one pick. That's the most ridiculous no. take, and I kind of want to hear Blaine's take on that. And yeah. So Nick Wright, he's my ding of uh, Fox Sports One. He's my ding dong of the week. That's Thank a heck of yeah, call. Alex. Heck of a ding dong right there for sure. I think I Alex think might be in the running. Alex may be on the way to winning him some tickets. Yeah. I don't know. We got other candidates. We'll see. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys all agree. I mean, man, the word, they basically try to say the organization is still kind of going back to the Vrabel. It's a horrible organization. They shouldn't have fired Vrabel and all this. And I think that's what leads down this road. Uh, but that that's nowhere near true uh, what's going on uh, this offseason and everything else. I think they're going to be a competitive team. Are they a Super Bowl caliber team? No. But I think they're going to be in the hunt, especially with just the weapons that levis his arm. So let's just see where this goes. Yep. Uh, it'd be interesting. They get that this left tackle and get this line fixed. Uh, they're going to be able to sh- do some shootouts like we have never seen before. Boy, what was- in the organization, even in my era, like shoot, it was the time that they could shoot out was Billy Volick and McNair. Now he got an MVP, but then Volick, they didn't have a good team. Right. But they threw it all over the place. So I think they're going to be a, pretty exciting to watch. Got to get the defense really together now. You're talking about, you know, two years in a row they kind of addressed offense. So and they're going to have to get some defensive players, uh, not in secondary, but maybe up front, linebackers, D line. Yeah. Uh, who's up next? Let's get uh, Kyle in Springfield. Hey, Kyle, thanks for checking in. What's going on, boys? You tell Here's us. Y'all, NASCAR theme, Ding Uh-oh. Dong of the Week. Mickey? Okay. What? Mickey, you know, we've seen a lot of stuff getting thrown at cars before. Anything from the steering wheel to heat shields off the shoes. Oh, they got the helmets. Through the... <laughs> My Ding Dong of the Week goes to Joey Gase yeah. for throwing the whole rear Good. bumper cover. Oh, it was a bumper. And another car. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, man. That was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, what is he doing? What's the penalty for that? Do you know? Uh, he probably got a fine, but, man, I'm more impressed the man was able to grab the four-by-four piece of metal and just rip it off the car. <laughs> yeah. He was hot. He went straight at <laughs> I was like, whoa. Well, and, 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 and thank you for the call, Kyle. Uh, That's a good one. For sure, some ding dongery. And here's the thing. You look in the rule book, it's like, for ripping off the bumper and throwing, there's no, they just have to make something up. Like, this is what we're going to charge that guy. Well, if I, yeah. Here's the thing I would do. I've said this before. Where? If I was the NASCAR discipline czar, anytime somebody did something crazy like that, as long as no one got hurt, like you didn't try to throw it through the windshield or like take their head off with it. But if you just throw your gloves at somebody, or something, it always gets on Sports Center. Yeah. I would be like, hey, that's a $50,000 fine. And then reality, I would give them $50,000 for you getting. Would, you would give them? Yep. 
Oh, you're fired. Whatever I said <laughs> I was finding him, I would give him that much money. We just talked about NASCAR on Blaine and Mickey. We yeah, don't, yeah. We don't well, always get a chance to do that much. That's two I, weeks in a row, by the I, way. I would yeah. say I'm giving him a fine, uh, maybe not, but I would never say what it is, and I would not definitely give them money. <laughs> so hey man, they yeah, I want the perception. Hey, wink, wink, nod, nod. Great, great job, man. Just make sure nobody gets hurt. I'm not giving him money. Matter of fact, I may even say, oh, yeah, we're giving it to a charity. <laughs> Maybe I do that. All right. The Blaine and Mickey charity. Bananas is giving us the wrap it up symbol here. We can't no, miss our break. We're just getting started. Tommy in Nashville with the ding dong. Hey, Tommy. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, my ding dong of the week is the officiating in the women's tournament. It's oh. like watching a bad officiated high school game. <laughs> I mean, uh, the UCLA game this weekend, uh, Angel Reese, you'll see it again tonight. She gets by with flopping, and it's it's just bad. Oh. And they should have better officiating. And I'm not for a certain team. I'm just saying yeah, right, the right. officiating is bad for everybody. It's, it's just kind of embarrassing. I got That's you. Thank yeah. you. I mean, people talking about officiating is tough, man. All sports, all the time. Man, now. You got more tough. cameras than you've ever had. You got high def, which you didn't used to have. Uh, how about Ricky in Nashville up next? Hey, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good, man. Ricky, Ricky. My ding dong is for uh, FanDuel and the NBA for letting uh, Michael Porter Jr.'s little brother bet millions and millions of dollars on his on himself. And instead of uh, investigating him, they give him high roller perks. Oh. You should check it out. Oh. Oh, is that the guy that it wasn't playing and he would tell like, <laughs> like, it's like Yeah, Mike, it's Michael Porter Jr.'s little brother. Oh, gosh. Or oh, big my. brother. I don't know if it's his little brother. I know it's his brother. Yeah. Wow. Oh my like God. like bets of like twenty five thousand, thirty thousand things that trigger on, yeah. investigations by yeah. people like on, that. They know who makes random, those bets on this random NBA player who doesn't get any minutes. Oh gosh! Yeah. <laughs> All right, one more, John in Franklin. Then we will pick a winner in the break before our man Ben McKee joins us. John, finish us up with a big ding dong here. Hey, I'm a UT fan too, but UT fans that are saying that Zach. Eddie will not play in the NBA. You cannot. <laughs> yeah, that has a deep that. Bone. The guy is going to. I, I, I've told all of them. I go in there and comment on Facebook where, and I say, let's check back with each other a year, five years from now, and see which one of us can say, I told you so. Because the guy, there's four or five good NBA centers. The rest of the team have jumped. He will be better than, than all of those other players. So the guy's going to play. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's he's an NBA player. He I sure is. I don't know where it's that comes beyond, from. It's just, it's just butt sore. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that. I like that, man. <laughs> all right. If you're yeah. on hold, stay it's, on it's hold. Uh, we will evaluate the ding-dongs in the break. Let's quickly give ours, though, of course. Uh, mine real quick. Rashi Rice for the Chiefs. Why are you ra- Why are you street racing? You seen that. I saw that. Why are you street just racing, walking man? away. And then why did you run away? Yeah. Even worse. Made it worse. Ding-dong of the week. Well, I'll get my ding down when we come back. Well, we got Ben McKee. Oh, man, Big Ben. Yep. Big Ben. I, my, well, mine was, we already discussed, I said earlier, it's just all the the referee and they, the, Tennessee could have won the game. They, they could have won. They had multiple opportunities. Was the referee in? Great. No. Was it bad? Yes. But it was bad on both ends. It's just they had a better dominant player and you had to be able to compensate for it and they didn't. So uh, I get it, though. When you're the fan, I, I, you know, I. I feel for you. I want him to win just like you did. <laughs> I yeah. But I get, never was that. Dang it, that was a foul. Maybe a couple times. Other yeah. than that, no. Double digits from one guy they on your team. Attacked. They should have yeah. attacked him. Yeah. Ran right at him. Yeah. That's what you do when you go get a big force like that. Get it, get him out of there. David went right at Goliath. Yeah. yeah and then they did not go at Edie. Um, mine is the dumbest mock draft I've seen so far. This guy, Tom Fernelli. Actually, has the Titans trading up from seven to four and taking Joe Alt? That is just trading horrendous. up to four to get Joe Alt. We're trying to get ahead of Harbaugh and those guys. Yeah, just Chargers. trying to get trying to get ahead of everybody. They don't have anything to give to get up to there. get up there. Thank you. It's a fifteen hundred <laughs> point total to get to an eighteen hundred <laughs> point total, and three hundred point difference is like a late second round pick, which they don't have, which means they would have to give away their second pick for next year. And then probably an end of the line pick this year, just to say, give us something for this year too. Yeah. I don't even know how he thinks they were going to do it. Well, I, well, I'm gonna say it, it, it never, on, never Ding, say dog. never, but, <laughs> but that's a low percentage there on that one.
All right, we'll pick a ding dong and uh, stay on hold. If you're on hold, we'll let you know who gets it and who gets the tickets to see REL Speedwagon. Woo! Hang on. Blaine and Mickey, powered by all four seasons. Garage doors. Ben McKee up next. Ding a ding dong. Yep. Hey there, Tennessee, it's Blaine Bishop, and spring has sprung, and Cool Ray is revved up to make it your best season yet. With flowers blooming and birds chirping, let's dive into how Cool Ray can make this season a breeze. Outer season is upon us, and pollen is in the air. Oh, mine, mine are flared up, but fear not, Cool Ray has your back. Our $49 tune-up will have your HVAC system running smoothly, keeping allergens at bay. Plus, enjoy 10% off indoor air quality products for an extra boost. So are you ready to say goodbye to your old HVAC system? Well, with Cool Ray, it's uh, with the old and in with the new. And we'll even give you $1,000 for your old system when you upgrade with us. That's right. We'll pay you to breathe in easier and with tennessee's unpredictable weather it's crucial to be prepared that's where our whole home generators come in with fifteen hundred dollars off you can keep your home powered up rain or shine so don't let mother nature catch you off guard let cool ray be your beacon of reliability yes so tennessee are you ready to embrace spring with confidence give cool ray a call today and let us make this season a breeze we're your partner in comfort no matter what season. So here's to spring filled with sunshine, smiles, and stress-free living. Cool Ray, keeping Tennessee cool, plumbing right, and lights bright. So visit CoolRay.com to take control of your home's comfort. That's CoolRay.com.
Blaine and Mickey, 1045 The Zone. Who won the tickets? John? John from Franklin with his Tennessee fan saying Zach Eady will not make the NBA. Yes, his finish. Call me in a year or three or ten, and we'll see who was right about that. I'll tell you who's always right about stuff when it comes to Tennessee is Ben McKee because he's there for everything. He was he was at this game, and he was at the games Ooh. before that and all the games, and Ben joins us now. Uh, Go Vols 247 own uh, mm-hmm. Ben McKee at Ben McKee 14. Ben, there's always rumbling about stuff, and I know we're going to talk about the guys, but certainly the breaking news today about Kelly Harper being out for Tennessee. How much rumbling was there behind the scenes that this could happen or would happen or however it was going to go down? I I wouldn't say that there was a ton. Uh, It it was obviously a conversation, but I I don't know that it was ever um, a a hot topic per se Mm. uh, because I I don't know that it was – I, I think on one hand it was an obvious decision, and on the other hand it was not just because Kelly Harper uh, led Tennessee to a national championship as a player and her connections to the program, obviously, having played uh, for the program. So I, I thought that made it a tougher decision. And, and then I thought we also needed to learn just how important women's basketball was to Danny White. And, and I don't say that to insinuate that I didn't think that it wasn't important beforehand Um, But obviously men's basketball and and baseball is doing really well uh, in receiving um, financial funding for renovations and and things of that nature. Football is football, of course, but uh, I I was curious as to kind of where women's basketball stood on the pecking order of importance. And I think this move signals that that Danny White absolutely wants to get this corrected and uh, I, I think it was the right move. It, it was just a little surprising to me that they went ahead and, and made the move now instead of giving her uh, another season. Not that I thought it was the right move to give her uh, another season. Again, I, I think this was the right decision uh, because there wasn't a lot of hope to cling on to, quite frankly. Uh, when you look at what was being done on the recruiting trail, uh, you look at the in-game coaching, uh, and the simple fact is that the Lady Vols are one of the – premier brands in women's college basketball. I would say it's them and and UConn with others starting to emerge. And there's a lot of talk about the women's games tonight. They're going to be terrific, and and Tennessee's not in the mix and hasn't been in the mix uh, for several seasons now, has not been back to the Elite Eight in quite some time. So uh, when you pair that lack of success on the court with the lack of hope to cling to elsewhere – I thought this made it the right decision. But, again, just a a little surprised that they didn't give her another year only because of her ties to the program. But, again, I I do think it was the right move. Who goes to the top of the Ben McKee Go Vols 247 hot board there? We've all been kind of wondering about Carol Lawson. Yeah, that that to me is the the obvious one uh, that everybody is going to mention first and and foremost. Uh, And and I think Carol Lawson would be a a very nice hire. Uh, She's still – uh, early in her Duke tenure, I guess you could say, and early in her head coaching career to a certain extent. But uh, just go back and listen to her call basketball games at the professional level in the NBA, and and you know that she is terrific in terms of the X's and O's and, and all of those things, and, and she does a great job of relating uh, to her players. Uh, obviously is very familiar with the tradition of the Lady Vols and, and the standards. So I think that would be a, a really nice hire. Uh, but I also think that, on the other hand, it may be time to go out of the family as well. The The last two hires uh, haven't necessarily been the worst, per se. Uh, they, they've they still won quite a few basketball games, and uh, they have always been in the NCAA tournament under Holly Warlick and Kelly Harper. But that's not the standard with the Lady Vols, just simply getting into the tournament and winning the majority of your basketball games. So the standard is to to compete for the national championship and to make it to the final four each and every single season. So uh, I I feel like maybe this, this last time around, they they went with comfort instead of uh, making the right hire. Uh, So I I do think Kerry Lawson is is up there, but I also don't think that it would be the worst idea to go outside of the family because yes, you'd you'd love the storyline of uh, this Lady Vol or, or that Lady Vol leading the Lady Vols back to national prominence, somebody who played uh, for for Pat Summit, but that hasn't necessarily worked out as of late. So uh, women's basketball is in a really, really healthy spot, and, and there's a ton of terrific coaches, and I think it may be time to 
I, I'm not saying you absolutely have to hire outside of the family, but I think you should absolutely look more than you have in the past. Hanging out here with our man Ben McKee at Ben McKee 14, go Vols 247. Hey, Big Ben, uh, I guess following that note on uh, women's uh, basketball, can you give us maybe a couple coaches you think maybe potentially should be in the mix? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, obviously, Kara Loss is, yeah. is the obvious one. Uh, outside of her, I, I know the coach at Grand Canyon has has picked up a lot of steam amongst tennis mm-hmm. fans uh, throughout the season. Uh, the Oregon State coach, who, is, who has had a really solid season, he, he's one uh, that I, I think would be one that they could consider and, and probably should consider. Mm. I mean, Enzel down the street at MTSU, I, I know he's maybe towards mm. the, the end of his career than towards the beginning, but uh, he, he certainly wins a lot of games and is familiar with the Lady Vol brand. And, um, I mean, he, he kind of went toe-to-toe with LSU there uh, a couple of days ago in, in the – I guess it was the second round. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think there there's – there's, there's no doubt that Tennessee's going to have plenty of options. I mean, the, the mm-hmm. Lady Vols are an iconic brand. To me, it's them and UConn. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, there, there's some others creeping in there, like South Carolina and, and now LSU and, and Iowa. Um, you, you're not going to be able to go get Don Staley. I mean, obviously that would be <laughs> the first phone call to make, but I don't, I don't think Don Staley is picking up that phone call, not because – of a lack of respect for the Lady Vols or anything along those lines, but just because she has it absolutely uh, rocking and rolling um, down there in South Carolina and has built a juggernaut, there, there's really no need for her to leave South Carolina. Uh, I know that's one name that I see frequently mentioned on social media, but I, I just would be absolutely stunned if, if mm. that one happened. But uh, there, there's certainly plenty of options out there, uh, and the Lady Vols will have their pick of the litter just because of how great of a job that it is. Well, you can help uh, Miss Miss Staley uh, get a a pay raise though. That would that would help her out a lot. No. But uh, now on to the uh, men's basketball game here, and kind of give us your overview on your thoughts of uh, the loss to Purdue. Yeah, very frustrating loss mm-hmm. uh, for for many reasons. Uh, I think the obvious reason being that the Zach Eady experience is not a fun <laughs> one, and uh, Tennessee did not play well against him whatsoever. And uh, they they did struggle uh, to contain him in the post. They they fouled too much at the beginning of the game, but also part of the Zach Eady experience is is not necessarily getting a, a whistle uh, that that you appreciate. And again, I, I do think that Tennessee uh, was very physical. I, I thought early on they did pick up some some genuine fouls, but uh, very frustrating if you're a Tennessee fan to see him draw uh, 16 fouls and only commit one foul in 39 minutes as a center in a physical basketball game. Uh, Again, I'm not saying that that's the reason that Tennessee lost because it had its chances elsewhere Mm -hmm. to to still win the game despite the whistle. Um, But but that's frustrating. And uh, those numbers, they they don't simply add up unless uh, you are a Purdue fan or a couple of these national media media members out here on, on social media. So, uh, that that part was frustrating, but again, uh, Tennessee just did not have anybody that could even compete with Zach Eady. I mean, Jonas Adu no showed after a, a terrific season. Uh, Tobe Awaka, I thought he gave it his best shot. Yeah. He just couldn't stay out of foul trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then JP Estrella, I mean, that kind of came out of job. nowhere. Yeah. The true freshman, and, and I mean, he 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 was the definition of giving your all for Tennessee. Tennessee fans and players and mm-hmm. programs like to say that, and and he he defined that yesterday and. Uh, he, he really made some plays to help Tennessee make a run on Zach Eady. Uh, so it, the, the Zach Eady experience for a million reasons is, is just not a fun one. And uh, Tennessee learned that for his second time yesterday. And I also thought it was a game where Tennessee uh, was going to have to win that one offensively. And I thought they had some shots down the stretch uh, that were pretty good looks, pretty open. And, and they just didn't make those shots down the stretch. I mean, they, they come back and, and they cut it to a one point game, a, a tie game and, I had a couple of looks there to 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 give them a one point lead, a two point lead, and uh, they were good looks with Dalton Connect, who uh, scored 37 points, and and it just didn't go in. So, a uh, very frustrating afternoon at the office for Tennessee. 
Yeah, I, you know, I want to clap back a little bit on, on the Edie and, and Grant. I don't. I think he was an unmovable force, and it was tough to guard. And maybe that's that was their plan all along. But yeah, he didn't have fouls, but they didn't attack him either as well. Because because of they have no post presence on offense, let alone. Uh, players didn't attack him uh, when they were taking him off the dribble uh, at times to go after him. So I thought that was a things that maybe you could have done to kind of even the playing field there a little bit. But uh, I was really disappointed in which I've been talking about all season long that at some point you're going to come across a team where the supporting cast must stand up and nobody stood up outside of Connect. And that's the supporting cast of Connect. Yeah, I think that's a, a great point, and, and I think your previous point is a, a great one, too. Uh, again, I, I don't at all think that Tennessee lost that basketball game solely because they, they didn't get the benefit right. uh, of the whistle. I, I Again, I think it's a little weird that it a, is. A, it is. a center in 39 minutes in a physical basketball game only gets one foul called against him, but that's not the reason that Tennessee lost. It, it, it played a factor, but Tennessee didn't have an answer for him in the post whatsoever, and, and he absolutely deterred people uh, from going towards the rim. I, I thought Zakai Ziegler, uh, not literally scared to go into the paint, but <laughs> didn't like think that it was a good idea to go into the paint because he's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and Zach Eady is 7'4". Those odds just physically do not play in, in Zakai's favor. So uh, I thought Zakai over dribbled at times and, and threw some passes that were grenades to teammates at the end of the shot clock. Uh, so I completely agree with you there uh, that they, they did not attack Zach Eady whatsoever. And, and I think it was because of, of the force that he is down there in the pain. And uh, y- your odds are not great at attacking him. Uh, I believe Tennessee only made seven uh, two-point shots in the entire game, which speaks to his ability to protect the rim. Even if he doesn't block as many shots as you think that he would, he still protects the rim because people are, are scared to attack him under the rim. So I agree with you there. And, and that played a role in the supporting cast not showing up, um, not attacking the rim. Uh, Josiah Jordan-James made some, some terrific shots early on and then uh, did not really take many shots down the stretch. Zakai Ziegler. Uh, again, I thought he over-dribbled at times, like I just mentioned, and, and also he, he missed some shots that he typically makes. I thought Jordan Ganey provide, provided a nice punch off of the bench in the second half of the two threes that, that he knocked down, but maybe would have liked to have seen more of that in the first half. And I mean, you, you didn't have any offensive production from your post players. So um, at that point, Santiago Vescovi coming off of the flu and, and was still really uh, battling uh, the after effects of the flu. I mean, he sounded awful in the locker room after the game and, and just looked like a guy that had absolutely zero energy. So, uh, And I, I do think that once Dalton kind of got it going and he ends up finishing with 37 points, which is the most points ever scored by a Tennessee player, they started seeing those threes go down, and, and I, I feel like they felt like they could just – uh, win that thing with what Dalton was doing, and, and obviously that that did not prove to be the case because by the by the time the game was wrapping up, I mean they they were throwing two and three bodies at Dalton, and and nobody else was taking shots or, or making shots, and that is not a recipe for success. Mm. Well, you know, a caller called in uh, Ben one with Ben McKee at uh, two four seven Sports, uh, and they said that, and I'm not sure. I want you to tell me and, and Mickey and Bananas and and the fans listening. His development of bigs is kind of non-existent, and I, I I didn't really know the, you know, I guess the rosters over the years and guys who have left and come. What were your thoughts on that when someone says that? I, I wouldn't say that it's been completely non-existent. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he took Grant Williams, who was a three-star, right. who was going to an Ivy League school and turned him into a yeah, uh, two-time SEC said. Player yeah. of the Year and a first-round pick, um, and. and you know, Grant has been, just off the top of my head, Grant has been the best big that they have had. And, uh, you know, Jonas's post performance, player. yes, post player. Mm-hmm. Uh, jo- Jonas was disappointing yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at, And Jonas did have some big-time offers coming out of high school. But he, he was, although he was a highly ranked four-star, you knew that there was going to be some development that was needed. Just go watch him play as a freshman. Uh, so when when you look at Jonas and you look at Tobe not really having any offers coming out of high school, uh, you go back and, and you look at what Kyle Alexander was, what John Fulkerson was. I, I mean, there are they, they may not have had premium bigs or post players that that have won major awards or anything like that outside of Grant, mm-hmm. uh, but they have developed quite a few okay. big men. I, I would say, um, 
and th there have been some that have also been poor evaluations that did not pan into anything. And I mean, you, you see DJ Burns going to NC State, and I don't think that was a developmental issue for Tennessee. That that was uh, DJ not very mature as as a true freshman at Tennessee, and and NC needed State. to. To, to spend a couple of years maturing and you're seeing the and kudos to him. You're seeing the, the byproduct of him uh, maturing. So I, I would completely disagree with that statement. Quite frankly, they, they have hit or miss on a couple and mm -hmm. you, you maybe have gotten inconsistent post play at times, but it, it the development of post players has not been completely non-existent. Uh, got about a minute left with Ben McKee of Go Vols 247. What, what do you think this lineup looks like next year? Obviously, you've got mm -hmm. a lot of experience that's walking out the door. So just preliminarily as this season ends, quick look to next year. Yeah, you you got to hit the transfer portal hard. And uh, uh, you got to bring a couple of guards in. You know Zakai is going to be your starting point guard. Uh, I would think that Jonas is going to be your starting five man. Tobey is probably your starting four. Uh, and then you've got to find who's going to be your starting two or, or three. Uh, could that be Jordan Ganey sliding into the starting rotation? Could that be Jemai Meshack sliding in full-time? He's obviously done that a couple of times. Uh, your hope, but we'll see what Freddie DeLeon does this offseason. Uh, Cameron Carr, uh, if those two guys are back next year, you, you want those those guys to take a huge step this offseason and potentially compete to be in the starting lineup. Uh, but I, I do think and know that Tennessee would love to add Two, two guards or so, two perimeter players that, that can really score the basketball to help out next year's lineup. Hey, we, yeah, one, one more, more real on the quick. way out. Yeah. yeah, connect in one season in uh, Vols uh, men's basketball history, where would you rank them? Ooh, uh, I mean, he's got to be number one all time just based off of the, the single season that he had. I, I think the yeah. I think the numbers speak for itself there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the heck of a season for sure. One for the ages. And Ben McKee wow. was there and wrote all about it and blogged about it and podcasted about it, and we'll keep doing that. At great Ben job, McKee, man. 14. Hey, certainly great job by you and the crew, buddy, this year. Go Vols 247 for all the latest. Just hit them up there. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate you, bro. Th thanks, guys. Y'all have a great week. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Hey, man, Ben and, the, ben and West Rucker doing podcasts in the car and everything else, driving back from stuff. Follow them, and uh, you will never be disappointed. We come back. Titans are linked to a guy whose physical comp is a guy that a bunch of you loved a lot, and he's not here anymore. I'll tell you who the guy they're linked to. Our man Justin Mello, he's on top of it. Uh, I think Titans fans are going to like this. And if you want to try to squeeze in a call, 615-737-1045. Blaine and Mickey powered by all four seasons garage doors. Brock Powers. <laughs> I know that's not. For many of you who have lived here a long time, you already know Eurofix has been in Middle Tennessee area for your European car repair needs now for 24 years. We've all gotten to watch them grow. And I don't know about you, but I love watching a hometown business take off. Well, we're now proud to announce the fifth location in Mount Julia for Eurofix on Mount Julia Road, right across the street from Dairy Queen. And Eurofix can serve you in Franklin, Hundred Oaks, Murfreesboro, Bellmead, and now Mount Juliet. Pretty cool getting to watch a small-town mechanic starting in the barn in his backyard of a single-wide trailer and now grow to five locations repairing thousands of cars each month. And at Eurofix, you get a three-year nationwide warranty and a free loaner car with every repair appointment. All you have to do is just give them a call at 844-EUROFIX. That's right, 844-EUROFIX, or you can visit them online at myeurofix.com. That's myeurofix.com. Love you, Tom Blaine, did you?
The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lock boxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing. Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. They're showing finger roll highlights on TV. They got into George Gervin here. Kids, if you've never seen the finger roll, you need to Google George Gervin, the Iceman. Dr. J yet. He's so Clyde the Grad and Grady. And what brought this on was Luka Doncic basically was behind the free throw line, leaned oh. around his man, and finger rolled one from... It was insane. Right, I right, saw it right, right, Just inside the it three. Oh, hard. you saw it when it happened. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. He was on fire. I think he ended up with like 42... Some he was unstoppable. He's he was messing people. with them. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because somebody was trying to say that uh, because they passed him up in the draft. I don't know if that was true or not. But uh, he's still see holding it. That was so many. That was a couple a while back. <laughs> hey, people hold grudges, man. Oh, oh yeah. Edie was at the podium last night getting after say? Rick Barnes. Like Rick Barnes could have had me. Yeah, he said so many oh, people. Were, over, so many people overlooked, overlooked me. me yeah. Rick Barnes did. He's a great coach, but he overlooked me. They, was, they recruited him, though, but they just said, eh, we'll pass. I guess they passed. I, I think, like, it was one of the, they went and scouted him. Yeah. And they just decided to go a different direction or something yeah. like that. I don't know. That stuff, I told you, recruiting, 
out of high school. I, mean, I know he was at IMG, uh, but it, it, it's tough, man. You don't know which one's going to hit or miss. I mean, he definitely hit. He's an unstoppable force. I mean, I, it's, it's, I'm sure there's a lot of teams that probably like, a little slow-footed. Uh, the game has changed. Sure. Just, how much are we going to use them? You know, just, I mean, they had a big, come up somewhat similar to them, uh, but not as skilled. Uh, what was the guy that just graduated a couple years ago? For Purdue? No, for Tennessee. Oh, for Tennessee. He, he came off the bench most of his career. The big guy. He was tough. He started his last year. It was just a couple years ago, oh, 35. Euros? Yes, Euros. Euros Plasvich. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he, I, I bet they viewed him like that. Like, no, nah, I don't think we want don't that guy. Don't need two of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yep. How much are we going to use a guy like that? We want to shoot a bunch of threes every game, not twos. I think that's why a lot of people say you know, he doesn't recruit maybe post players like that, like a big like that. And yeah, the game has kind of changed, though. It's it's really interesting, but he's a diamond interrupter. There's not too many of them like that. Uh, here you go. Our man Justin Mello is reporting, you know, draft visits and things. He's he's the draft guy. And, uh, he's our guru. He's our draft guru. By the way, we need to have him on. You got to check in with Mello. I think we got some time this week. We sure do. Mm. Uh, the Titans, this is from earlier today, the Titans held a virtual meeting with Missouri defensive lineman Darius Robinson. Uh, he had eight and a half sacks in the SEC this season, possesses great inside-outside versatility. Robinson is on the board at 38. He could project it as he could be projected as an ideal replacement for bum bum pa. Who's the guy we're all going to miss? My favorite free agent acquisition of the last however many years, the one and only Danico Autry. Mm. So I, I started looking and I thought, what was what were his measurements? Six five, one eighty five, Danico. And I thought one one eighty five. 285. 285. I was going to say, that's bananas his weight. 6'5", 285. It's Blaine's exact measurement. He played, 6'5". He, he, he went in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Five, he might be a basketball player. So I thought, wait a second. This dude Robinson, what were his measurements? Dun, dun, dun. 6'5", 180. Or, I almost did it again. 285. 6'5", wow. 285. Um <laughs> <laughs> he ran 40 in under five seconds. His 10-yard split was 1.73. Broad jump, 9-3, which for him is probably a long step. Uh, his 2023 first-team All-SEC led the team 14 tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks. He started 12 games, uh, played more edge, it says, than in previous years, 43 tackles and a forced fumble. And Blaine, this is something you said that you would like for them to always look for, was a team captain. Oh yeah! This dude yeah, checks yeah. a bunch of boxes at thirty-eight, man. And yeah. in the SEC, yep, two of those boxes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know a lot of people gonna say you being, like SEC players no, too. I mean, I, I, you know, there's a lot of you know, there's business side to it too. Now you, you get a lot of fan support, and so and, and plus it's the best conference. So obviously, there's some times you're gonna have to go outside of the conference, but just there in the Big Ten, I'm, I'm like I'm hitting hard with those. Uh, players, especially trench players, you know, in the trenches on the offensive, defensive line, because those are the biggest and baddest dudes alive. Uh, they did all the recruiting for you. So if they perform well in those leagues. You got to believe that they got a shot of being, you got a better shot of being successful in the National Football League. So it's kind of, let alone being captain. And this also from Justin Mello, I mentioned to you guys during the break, uh, Titans odds for pick for who they're going to pick at number seven. This is per bookies. Dot com. Joe Walt is the leading candidate at minus 150. J.C. Latham is uh, second at plus 350. J.C. Latham. Then That's Dallas the Turner, edge, at plus 500. Jared Verse, edge, at plus 800. The field at plus 1,200. So that shows me two positions is what Vegas likes for the Titans. Offensive tackle and a pass rusher. They go offensive, the, they the go, first pick, right? Yeah, and if they go offensive tackle with number seven... I think with the additions in free agency, very open up to get a pass rusher at number thirty-eight in the second round, and I think Mr. Robinson is uh, he'll he'll should be available based on cur- current projections. I said a long time ago that a defensive end may be part of the first round because <laughs> they didn't get archery. That when they said uh, we tried to get, uh oh, that means they need that. Audrey had twenty. Autry had twenty-eight and a half sacks in the last three years. 28 and a half. He had 11 and a half last year. Career high. Got to replace some sacks. You got to get big, got to get big Jeff some help. Sure do. Uh, you got to get 3HL some help because they're coming up next because it is time for us to go. We can talk a whole lot more Titans tomorrow, though. But as always, in the meantime, in between time, peace. Go Wolves.